Okay, so this game was from the Super Bet Chess Classic in Bucharest, and it was played between Lupulescu and Anishgiri. So, game started with an English opening. So, Black traded the bishop early on for the knight. And this is one of the trending lines in the English. And Black decides to trade another pair of minor pieces. And White is slightly behind in development here, but he does have the bishop pair. So in this position, um, White decided to castle. Bishop f3 is also possible. Um, but Black would just reply with bishop b7. And if these bishops are traded, the position is still around equal. So here white played f3, which is the first new move in the position. Um, only bishop d2 has been played before. And the game followed knight e6, queen c3, knight f4. And in this game, white got the open file early and tried to pressure early on. But the game eventually ended in a draw. So anyways, um, we played f3. And here, black plays a5. They're just continuing to develop. a5 is just to secure a solid outpost for the knight. Um, white didn't play e4 right after f3 because then black would play f5 and he would win the e4 pawn because there's no way to protect e4 if white takes and he loses the bishop so e4 would be bad um, white continues developing black plays f5 now uh, to open up space for his rook um, if he wants to, well, he's going to attack in the near future and um, prevent e4 from ever happening. Here, white plays rook ad1. Um, I think rook e1 is slightly better because then he doesn't block the bishop from going to c2. The bishop is better on c2 um, because it pressures f5. And um, the rook is just better on e1. You can easily defend the second rank or defend the e pawn. Because um, after rook ad1, black just plays d6, and his d pawn is never going to be a weakness. So both players continue developing. Here, white plays rook f2. Um, he's just preparing for the future. Um, where he has to defend on the second rank. Rook f6, bishop d3. Um, so here white's trying to shuffle his pieces around um, to prepare for the for black's like attack, basically. So he's trying to shuffle rook e2, bishop here, bishop g3. But he needed to clear the bishop from e2 first. Queen f7, rook e2, queen h5, bishop e1, and here black plays bishop e4. So, um, so um, the best move would actually have been rook h6, but the idea with bishop e4 is that um, white can't take the bishop because of f takes and um, white can't move the bishop because he loses the rook and if he moves the rook then he loses um, oh yeah well he can't move this rook either so so never mind so this is just very bad because he can't even move 
any of the rooks and white's just gonna take sorry I meant if um white moves the rook here then black will just take and and he's up uh he's up a pawn so um white has to drop his bishop back so actually rook h6 would have been better because um the only move for white would have been bishop g3 if h3 then um in order to prepare this bishop takes f3 he plays knight i mean black should play knight e6 first to prevent um any queen d5 check in the future and then once white drops the queen back then black takes Oh well, knight e6 would just kick the queen out. There's no square for the queen to actually go to d5. So scratch this. That just um, and this is winning for black. So if um, white tries to well, white can't move this rook because he loses this rook. So. If white tries to move this rook, then black will take. And then if rook g2, then black will just take this. So there's too many things to defend. So bishop g3 is the only move. And then after bishop g3, um, black will play knight e4 now. And he's threatening to take on g3, followed by queen h1. So white has to take, black takes back, and then white has the same problem with the the rooks being undefended. So white has to move the two rook, I mean, um, white has to move this rook and then just lose the bishop, but now um, the infantry is equal, but after e6, black has a better position with the better bishop and white has a weak pawn on e3 so this is uh this is good for black he has a solid advantage here okay anyways bishop e4 bishop b1 um black continues with rook g6 Threatening bishop f3 or queen f3 and white plays bishop g3 only move now black trades and brings his knight because there's this there's a there's a pin in the rook so there's not really a way for white to defend g3 um without losing f3 so he has to look for counterplay so first he protects the rook, so he can actually threaten and take the knight. And now black takes the bishop. And before white takes the knight, um, he checks first. So this is this is uh, really important um, because if he takes this first, then black will just win a pawn and defend pretty easily. He'll be able to retreat the queen. But when white checks first, black can't like retreat the queen. He can't physically move the queen back. So king h8, um, black wins the pawn now, but white has counterplay with e4. So like the queen not being on f7 is a big deal because now white's pieces are all protected and they're all coordinated. Like they're all well placed and we can see that um, black only has like one piece to defend the back rank here. So he has coordination problems, piece coordination problems. So white, um, white saw this queen d5 and then he continued with e4. Um, there is a, uh, one problem with e4 is that black can 
Okay, so there is um one problem with e4 is that it blocks the queen now from protecting f3 and um, black took in the game. Um, but white calculated this. So he continues with queen f7 and he knows that um, any checkmating threats are protected by the rook on e2 and this rook supports the rook on e2. So there's no, um, like basically white's king is safe here. So he can freely move his queen and counterattack. And with queen f7, um, white's gonna win a pawn back. So black has to move his rook to g8. If he decides to move it elsewhere, then it's just gonna cause him more problems after e takes f5, because now white's threatening a checkmate. So rook g is the best square for the rook. E takes f5. Um, white doesn't want to trade the queens here because, well, like after the queen trade, he's going to be down a pawn in the rook end game. So his queen is like a lot more active on f7, um, uh, paired with the double rooks here. So, oops. Okay, anyways. Um, let me just get rid of these. So here black played queen c6, which is a mistake. He should have played something like h6. Um, because his queen was quite active on f3 and he should have made room for the king for the future. If white starts taking the pawns, then black would take this pawn and then defend. And this is fine for black because his queen and rook are quite active. So in the case that white tries to like create counterplay, black always has this spot up open and then there's dangers for white too if he overextends. So, but black played queen c6 in the game and this is not good because um, white continues rook f2 now. Um, basically threatening f6 and this rook still protects the checkmate um, blocks any queen checks on this diagonal and opens the way for this rook and queen c5 is the final mistake um, after rook e7 it's winning for white um, yeah, basically the threat is f6 and there's also rook c7 after queen d4 um white played rook e8 if black move the queen back with queen c6 um then f6 is just winning um yeah so white's just gonna take c7 move the queen over and then play f7 um, okay, so the reason that white didn't play rook e8 immediately, which would have been a mistake, is because of rook, uh, rook g2. Um, and if king takes g2 then queen c6 uh, which forks the rook and the king um, yeah okay so as I was saying rook e7 queen d4 rook e8 and then here um, there's no perpetual check for black well, yeah, this is just bad, and then rook g2 happened in the game, and eventually black ran out of perpetual checks. I think he resigned here, but I just showed the line where if he continues, he runs out. Okay, so this was kind of a back and forth game. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching. See you next time.